Ulysses, it's uh, one of our favorite episodes of the week. Mailbag time. We got good ones. We got trade possibilities, long-term contracts. It's going to be a good one. We always have good ones. <laughs> you are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we're the host of the Locked on Race podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Thank you for making Locked on Rays your very first listen every day. And remember, Locked on Rays is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube at Locked on Rays. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked on Rays and email us anytime, Locked on Rays at gmail.com. All right, uh, let's get right into these mailbag questions. Uh, We have great ones as per usual. This first one from Noah Worley, he uh, puts to us, uh, what position needs the biggest upgrade right now? I know you guys have been big Brandon Lau supporters, but would you make a push for a guy like Jonathan India? And if so, what do you do with B. Lau? Well, Noah, uh, thank you for writing to us. Uh, we appreciate it, man. I, Brandon Lau is such a for a guy who doesn't seem controversial. He is like so controversial in race. Yeah, you would think that hitting thirty nine home runs and being a five war player would not merit controversy, but then you add in the playoff ineptitude and the streaky play, then and the uh, lack of defense. It uh, can be a perfect storm, I suppose. The streakiness is is probably what hurts them the most because the postseason people only you know remember that later in the season or early in the season. You know, um, it's so it's so it's kind of um, it goes in and out of people's heads, I think. But yeah, the, the streakiness for for Brandon Lau is one of the things that I think the fandom is just not about. You want somebody who's constant, who's stable. At the end of the day, he's going to be fine. I think Brandon Lau is going to be fine, and he's going to have a good season in 2022. Yeah. Uh, so when you talk about like replacing Brandon Lau, Noah, I I don't. I don't think that you need to touch that part. I'm okay with changing the glove that he wears, and I don't mean in the outfield. I am a staunch supporter of making Brandon Lau a first baseman. I think his power would play at that position. I don't care that he's not 6'4". It doesn't matter. I think he's athletic enough to be a first baseman. So that's what I would do with Brandon Lau. I would not bring a Jonathan India, by the way, for those not keeping track of Jonathan India's um, numbers. He might have a 295 batting average, but that also equates to a 78 OPS plus. Uh, Two extra base hits in all of 2022 no home runs. Now, is that going to mean that Jonathan India is going to be a bad player? I don't think so, but I think you would agree with me, um, Kevin, that the Reds might be one of the most toxic environments right now to go to work when you don't even have double-digit wins on May 13th. Right. Well, first off, Jonathan India is hurt as of right now, not saying that he's going to be hurt the rest of his career. And quite frankly, he's just not as good of a player in terms of If we're adding it all together, he's not as good as Brandon Lau. I just, I don't know why you would want to make that swap unless the Reds are giving you a bunch of prospects. Um, So I don't think that's necessarily, if it's Jonathan India for Brandon Lau, that's not a win for the Rays, I wouldn't think. No. Um, I mean, Jonathan India gets hit by more pitches and has better hair. You know, and I guess is a little bit better defensively, but it's not like Jonathan India is a gold glove second baseman either. And I know he's a young player, a rookie, but um, I mean, if we're looking for, you know, some sort of offensive spark, maybe the Rays could look internally at a different Jonathan, Jonathan Aranda, who's killing it with triple A Durham. He's batting 343 with team leading 24 RBIs. Um, but to Noah's question, what position needs the biggest upgrade right now? I certainly wouldn't say second base. I certainly wouldn't say Brandon Lau's spot. I would say probably just having a middle of the order bat, Uh, you know, somebody that can provide some power and pop, you know, that uh, you lost without Austin Meadows and Nelson Cruz as of right now, I would say anyway. 
Yeah, wouldn't it be nice to have a thumper right there in the middle of the lineup? Kind of what Nelson Cruz did last year, which was to elongate that lineup, put people in a better position to succeed, to make damage uh, against the op opposing pitching staffs. That's the thing. You need that guy. And I know the Rays don't like to have a DH only type player. Right. Um, so that's so then that might not happen. That might not come to fruition. But it, it's so noticeable that you don't have a big bopper. You know, I, who's who's the guy? Who's the big homer guy right now for the race? Yeah, uh, it's silence. not like Zanino. It's silence. not Brandon Lau. It's uh, Manny Margot, I guess. That's it. But that's the thing. Like, you know, and it's not. It, this, bopper. And it's not. So, and, and I think it goes back to our point of we might not see a 30 homer guy in the Rays lineup this year. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wander has four right now. Uh, I don't. Yandy's got three. Again, it's the, the Rays are very um, all for the Commonwealth sort of thing. Nobody, uh, nobody's right. going to go away with, with a, a stat, um, you know, by themselves. But you would expect somebody to take up the, the the power mantle, and I know that I know the baseballs with the way that they're they're being used this year. It, it looks like they're just you know made up of um, wet newspaper, and they're not leaving the park. I understand that, yeah. but for not to have one single guy to be able to provide some pop, it, I think it's going to be a detriment for this team. You Maybe need people you would need have thought it'd be threat. Randy Rosarena, but Randy is. Not he, he might not even get to 20, might not yeah. even get to 18 with the way he's going right now. I mean, just even trying to get the ball out of the infield is, you know, a challenge at times. But, yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, I, I hate to totally blame the baseball because you look at what um, what the Angels did offensively against the Rays and you see what some of these other teams are doing. I think that's a little bit part of it. But I also think the fact that uh, you changed the complexion of this team in a big margin also leads to it as well and you're you, you can't just expect that Mike Zanino is going to hit 30 home runs again or or Brandon Lau is going to hit 39 home runs again or or Randy Arozarena is going to up his total from 20 or to 32 like that's it's just not a realistic possibility I think but a uh, great question from uh Noah Worley I just uh you know Jonathan India again I, he's probably praying that the the Reds ship him off of town so he doesn't have to be with that team but um i just don't but I don't honestly see how he would necessarily be a huge unless jonathan india certainly or unless he immediately becomes a 40 homer type of guy i just don't see where uh he would necessarily be that much of an add-on for the Rays if you're removing a brandon lau or somebody like that just my yeah, point. and now with that removal, adding Jonathan India, I think, would make every baseball team better. It's just that who are you taking spots away from? Right. And I would not take Brendan Lau at bats still, even though he is streaking. He's not really gotten uh, hot yet. Uh, I would not do that what, one for okay, one. Okay, what about this? Especially you because of the contract, too. Let's remind ourselves, yeah. Brendan Lau has a very good team-friendly contract assigned to him. It's it's Yes, for... That's about as team friendly as you can get with the type of yes. production he puts up. Playoffs or no playoffs, still that is huge, huge. Um, question though, last thing on this uh, topic: Would you trade, say, Vidal Bruhan for Jonathan India? Man, he did look he did look good though. Vidal, Vidal looked good. I mean, in Anaheim, that last game, whew, the stealing a third. I, I, I'm I'm pumped to see what Vidal can do. Yeah, so I wouldn't make that trade right now. I wouldn't make that trade right now. I want to see what Vidal has. I don't want Vidal Bruhan to be another Joe Ryan. I I, I want I want to see what Vidal has in in stock. Yeah, that's the thing is like the Reds probably are asking for the world for a guy like Jonathan India. He he's our he's our. Chip it should be right illegal. Now. He was the NL uh, Rookie of the Year. It should be illegal for the Reds to make another trade. This year, they should just be completely barred from making another trade because what they've done to that city is disgusting. Yeah, they might. Uh, you know, the the triple A team for the Reds, the Louisville Bats might put up a better record, just relegate the Reds and call up the Bats and yes. see if they can, you know, 
win more than four games in a month or whatever it is. It is really, really insane. Uh, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply again. That is linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. All right. uh, Moving on to our next question here. Let's see if I can pull it up. I should have had these ready to go but um let's go with this one from brian stark uh he asked simply will mike zanino be in a raise uniform next year i think this is the the question that's going to get a little bit louder as the season goes on because who's ready to take up that mantle We've seen Mejia's bat. I think Mejia's bat plays very nicely as a catcher. I I, yeah, I it. think it, I think it would play pretty much anywhere as a utility guy. Yeah, but as a catcher, it's like I'm like, okay, yes, put him in the lineup. The issue is it's mid-May now, and we are still seeing some defensive struggles. Not only I don't I wouldn't say calling the game. But defensively speaking, maybe the framing is not there. The blocking is not there. And I don't think the the arm is necessarily there either. So those are three big things that a catcher should be able to do very well in order to be able to put his team in a position to win. We haven't really seen that. So are you going to give Mejia just the starting gig next year just because he's the next guy up? Or yeah. are you willing to say, you know what? He plays very well as a backstop, giving some time off to Zanino. Can we approach Zanino and say, hey, do you want to stay here for a couple more years? And I think Mike would say yes. He would take a hometown discount. Look, I think that he's probably not going to get another $7 million per year contract. But at least for next year, I think it might have to be if he continues the way he's been as porous offensively, then it might have to be an incentive laden deal. Like, I don't know, 4 million, 5 million plus you add in incentives based on what he does produce offensively. But I can tell you as of today, I don't know, maybe the fan base thinks differently, but I could probably tell you that the coaching staff in the front office would not be comfortable with saying 2023, your catching tandem is Francisco Mejia and Rene Pinto. It's certainly not going to be for Proctor. He's not ready. Blake Hunt, he's not ready. Um, And here's the other thing, too. Uh, You're going to enter 2023 without most likely Kevin Kiermaier. You're also going to enter that year without another big-time leader in Mike Zanino. I feel like that's a tough pill to swallow. That's Again, that's a really good point. Beyond the fact that I know that Zanino's batting, you know, one fifty, a buck fifty, whatever it is. But let's yeah. also be frank. Again, nobody is hitting anymore, whether you're a catcher or a second baseman, whatever it may be. So, you know, I know as bad one fifty is, but as a catcher, like who's really tearing it up as a catcher right now outside of Wilson Contreras? It's a lot of you know six sixty, six fifty, six ten OPSs across the league. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then you add in the institutional knowledge that Mike Zanino has with the pitching staff and the players and vice versa. That means a whole heck of a lot, at least in my opinion, I think. Uh, yeah. And and after talking to so many uh, players and and knowing what the catching duties really mean to the yeah. pitching staff and what goes behind the scenes that the fan never does uh, see, even throughout the game, not even the prep and the post but throughout the game, what they're doing, um, I th- yeah, you're going to have to take the L sometimes on, on, on the batting numbers. That's just the reality. And right. I like the point that you're saying it's not only the race. It's the whole league having catchers that just don't particularly hit well. So then 
it's kind of a wash if you if you take the L on the offensive numbers in the catching position because everybody else is taking an L. But how big of a W are you taking on the defensive side? Yes. Are you stealing strikes? Are you putting down the right numbers or at least hitting the right buttons on your pitch comm for your pitching staff? Are you calming them down? Are you making sure that your pre and post game scouting reports are, are being done effectively? that the leadership that you're talking about in the dugout, like in, in the clubhouse, it's it's important. And I think when we talked about this last week with uh, who should be wearing a C for a captain, our podium, we had the two, the, the same podium, basically, Kiermaier, Franco, and Zunino. And what you're saying is true. 2023 could have no Kiermaier, could have no Zunino, I think that would be a void of leadership in the, in, in the dugout in the clubhouse, and I, I don't think that's a good thing. I think continuity would be good for this team. It always is. Yeah. And so having a Mike Zunino there for a couple more years would be, uh, I think would be a positive. Especially as you're trying to mold Shane McClanahan and Shane Boz and all the other young pitchers. I feel mm -hmm. like that would be a tough conversation to have with Shane McClanahan to say, hey, yeah, we're not having uh, we're not having Mike Zanino anymore. You'd be like, yeah. what? Really? Yeah. And I bet he's not the only pitcher on that staff that thinks that way. So, yeah. and, is, and again, uh, wouldn't you want Mejia? If Mejia is your your catcher of the future, wouldn't you want him to soak up as much time as possible with next to Zanino? And right. wouldn't that tandem be a little bit more effective if they're both doing eighty games, eighty games? If they're both like keeping each other fresh? We know that it worked last year. For God's sakes, Meg Zunino had hit 33 bombs. Yeah. Why? Because he was healthy. Why? Because he was he had a guy in in Francisco Mejia who was doing so well with the bat that he could keep him fresh. You could afford to do that swap. So can yeah. you do that this year? Hopefully. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a really, really good point. Um, I haven't checked up on this guy, but I wonder how Ronaldo Hernandez is doing. I assume Good he's still one. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, we should check out. Is, is, are x-rays available to be uh, instituted in our new segment if they never actually wore a Major Ooh. League Baseball Rays jersey? How's our x-rays farmhands maybe? That might have That's to be a, a conversation. I, I might have to get a third vote from Evan Klosky. Yeah, we might need so. Evan Evan not, to weigh on, on this. Yeah. I... I don't hate that idea. It would actually be interesting to kind of see how those guys are doing. For the record, um, I had mentioned that uh, Ford Proctor and Blake Hunt. Ford Proctor in AAA is batting 219 with a 633 OPS. Blake Hunt in AA is batting 200 with a 517 OPS. It's not easy for uh, catchers to hit at the professional level in addition to all the other myriad duties that you have to deal with. Just saying. And besides, Mike Zanino is a Florida man. He went to UF. He's from Cape Coral. Yeah. I, I just think that he's a, he's a family guy. He's a, He's got two kids. Why would he not be yeah. willing to listen to the race saying, hey, do you want to do an extension for two years? A now, many, kind of like a Manny Margot type extension without the dollars assigned to it. Like if Manny Margot, let's be serious. Yeah. I will ask you this question. If Manny Margot gets two years, 19 mil guaranteed, what do you think would keep Mike Zunino in a raise uniform for two years? What does that look like? I mean, he would probably take a, I think a two year, $8 million deal. I don't think he wants to move. I don't think he wants to have to go to a new organization. I think that's too low. I mean, everybody who does, I mean, I think he doesn't want to move, but I also think he yeah. understands that he could get paid more than four mil a year. I, so I, I understand that. But again, you have one bad season and you got to kind of, prove your worth again he, he, okay you had a great year in in 2021 that that's 50 years ago in today's baseball world i mean you look at what guys have to in free agency they have to scrap together to get a one-year deal where it's they're not that too far removed from having a really great season so i, I think, think the minimum well what's the minimum what's two year to eight mil is the minimum that you think that would the get a minimum for him to stay yeah I think if if the Rays offered him two years ten and another team offered him two years or or the Rays offered him two years eight and another team offered him two years ten, he'd probably take the Rays. Wow. I guess it depends I was, on the market it is. If it's in LA, then he would take the Rays because it you're 
you're losing yeah. out on that front. I don't know. I think I, I, I think he the least that you are going to get Mike Zunino tagged in here would be for two years, twelve mil, six mil each year. Like I think that's but is that's that probably year option the least. or it's a, it's guaranteed? No, guaranteed. Six huh. mil each year. I think that's what gets it done. I don't think he would be willing to just like he's getting paid seven mil this year. He's not going to take a pay cut. I don't think like at least well that he, not noticeably. You know? Yeah, I mean he's he's not guaranteed seven million dollars this year. He has to play a hundred games. Sure, or gets sure, but if he gets traded, he also yeah. gets the seven mil. So yeah, I think again it would be it would have to be some sort of incentive laden deal. It might be two years eight that could be worth up to 14 or 15 uh, okay then now we're talking yeah then now, and it also i think gets that would to get a point done. like i understand the value of mike zanino but say he he bats under 100 the rest of the year like at what point do you say okay we just can't do this anymore i i think there is a line but i think the line is uh very very low for the race <laughs> like yeah they don't care they they need the defensive me- the defensive metrics for them behind the dish is way more important. Just put them ninth the in the order, line. get them to at bats, and take them out after the sixth or seventh or something like that. A hundred percent, they're efficient. And get and Kevin, you know what else is efficient for you? Build bar. Build bars. Build bars are efficient because they do two things at the same time. Number one, they're super healthy. They're between 130 and 180 calories. So they do that very well. And they're also delicious. Why? Well, because they're covered in 100% real chocolate. And we know we all love chocolate. Mike Zunino probably loves chocolate because it's delicious. So today, go to built.com. And then you're going to see all of the flavors that they have to offer. And you're going to go crazy. And once you pick them all, then you're going to use promo code LOCKED15. If when you use promo code LOCKED15, you're going to get 15% off your order, which is fantastic news. It's like getting, you know, Christmas in July. It's just delicious. So today, go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and you're going to get 15% off your order at built.com. All right. Uh, great question so far. And this last one we'll get to today from Stephen Rains, he says, "Got a mailbag for you, fellas. Should we be concerned about Wander Franco's walk rate, and what would his OPS be if he was walking at his usual clip? I know this is nitpicking, especially for a 21-year-old, but I think he's very capable of being the best player on planet Earth." Um, ditto on that last one, uh, Steve. Yeah. Thank you for writing to us, man. We appreciate it. I, I, I just wonder is so special. He's 21 years old. Thank you also, Steve, for saying that he's 21 mm-hmm. years old. So we have to be a little bit patient with, with let's this. consider this. There are 22 year olds in single a who are considered top prospects. There we go. Thank you. There are older <laughs> players who are considered the top prospects right now. He's already doing it. Now, I do understand your point because his minor league career walk rate numbers hovered around 9%. So it is a bit odd when you look at his stat sheet right now and you see that 3.6% walk rate. Mm -hmm. And it's also odd seeing him that he actually is top 10 right now in qualified batters uh, that have a very low walk rate. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing. In those top ten, in that top ten list of of lowest walk rates for qualified at bats, you you've got guys like Tim Anderson in there with a 164 WRC plus, only walking 2.5 percent. Right. Sterling Marte, 112 WRC plus and a 3.5 percent walk rate. You got Rafael Devers, 149 WRC plus and only a 4.2 percent walk rate. So. There are the anomalies. Sometimes you're not going to be able to walk a lot as maybe you should and be productive. But I do think that the number that Wander has right now is not any indication of who he is as a player. It's just where he is right now. Right. And I think once his power develops, then teams will be a little bit more cautious and maybe not pitch to him as much. And let's also consider this. It just seems like... I'm not going to go as far as to say the umpires have it out for him, but there have been some really bad called strikes on him 
Like, I think it was in the game against the Angels where Shohei Otani was pitching. It was a 3-0 count, and Otani pitches, throws a ball above the zone. And, I mean, I wouldn't even consider – like, you're 3-0. You, you better throw it in the heart of the plate to, to get that called strike. And it, it just seems like there's and, – and I go back to the playoff series against the Red Sox where he had a really bad called strike on him. So you don't want to put it in the umpire's hands. And when he no. does – when he is patient, it seems like uh, the pitcher floats one over in the zone. He's like, man, I probably should have swung at that. So I also think it's still part of the learning process and developing process. And he's got to, I guess, get the umpires on his side once he becomes a experienced talent and he earns that benefit of the doubt. But um, I think he's getting jobbed a little bit too. And quite frankly, I'd rather see him swing the bat than draw a walk. Like, because who else is going to drive in Yandy Diaz in at this point? That's the thing, too. Thank you. Who is Wander Franco as a player? Is he up there because he wants to walk, or does he want to swing the bat because he's a kid who loves the game, who has yeah. a tattoo of the MLB logo he can hit in his debut date on the neck? Yeah, he wants to swing the bat. He's just that guy. He wants to swing the bat. He wants to hit. He's up there to hit. He's up there to do damage. And most of the time, he is successful at that. So then that's also the mentality there. What is his mentality? He wants to do damage up there. He doesn't want to walk. It's kind of like the... Um, I think that's just a, a maturity process, knowing that you are also being productive when you walk. When you take a walk, you're also helping your team out. Uh, I th but that just comes with a little bit more... Yeah. With a little bit more 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 seasoning in, in, in the big, so I think that also in, 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 in involves what he is as a player. Also, what have we learned from 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 Cash in the front office about Wander too? Lately, been told, hey, don't run out everything, kind of right. take it easy because of your hamstring and all that, your soft tissue issues. That's the thing. He's the guy. He wants to play. He wants to do it all. So. I think the walk rate is akin to running out everything. He yeah. loves to play the game. He wants to do it right. It's not fun to look. It's great to get on base, but it's not fun to just keep the bat on your shoulder. You're up there. Yeah. You have a talent, it, whether you're a bad player or a good player, you're up there to swing. You want to swing. And yeah. I totally don't blame him at all for that. Like Tim Anderson got an 80 hit tool. Yeah. Swing the bat. Like swing I, the bat. Not everybody can be everything. And again, I think once Wander maybe strikes fear into I if if I make contact, I can hit something park, then yeah. it, then the walks will come a lot more than they are right now. Because as of right now, he has to prove that he's a 25, 30 homer guy. And and I don't even think he's that as of right now. It's probably no. a fifteen to eighteen as of right now, which again, I'm at most. You know, yeah. So I wouldn't put wonder Franco up for more than 20 home runs this season. Like at all. I, I think he's in the teens. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. So I think it's a combination of factors, but um, look, he's, I would rather take a 10% strikeout rate and a 4% walk rate than, you know, a 30% strikeout rate and a 15% walk rate. I don't know, you know? Yeah. And, and, and to, uh, to Steve's other point, what his OPS would be with a mm -hmm. normal or uh, more of his average walk rate, I think it would be, you know, a notch above 800. I think it, you know, 820, 840, something like that. Right now, he's at a 309 um, on base and his OPS is at 768. So if he were a 350 guy, 350 on base yeah. percentage, that's 40 more points that get, gets him over the 810 OPS line. Yeah, he would be one of the most productive players in the history of race, <laughs> the franchise history. So, yeah, I think that'll come with time. And 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 yeah, last year he had an 810 OPS, yes, in 70 games or so. So, I think again, sophomore year pitchers have a better scouting report on 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 what to do for Wander, so that also takes into account, you know, they have yeah. seen they have a book on him now. So, that that'll be a little bit more tough. So, can Wander adjust? That's what we're seeing right now. Yeah. And I also think the, I don't know, I guess the complexion of the lineup too. Like, I don't know. It's uh, it's tough. Um, yeah. I think I, I, it's not something I'm overly concerned about it. Again, 
21 years old. Let's let's keep this in mind. I'd rather him like I I just from a fan perspective, I'm not up there to watch Wander take eight or nine pitches. I'm up there. I, I'm there watching on television to see him swinging at pitch number one, pitch number two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, and when he, it, it seems like when he does take like he'll take the first pitch and then he's down to one. It's hard to draw a walk off that. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. Um, good question there from from Steve Rains. I think it'll all even out. Just uh, give it some time there. Uh, all right. Thank you for making the Lockdown Rays podcast your very first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked on MLB podcast. That is also free and available on all platforms. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you tomorrow. 